Hey guys, how we doing here? Welcome to another episode of Ask Anthony, Facebook Live, live on Facebook, whatever you want to call it. Welcome to episode 13, and I better turn this phone off because this is going to go wacko all afternoon. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I'm Anthony Peluso, founder of Wealth for Life and property expert. Today I'm going to share with you guys the only three ways to make money from property, okay? Um, before we get started, want to thank uh, all of you guys that uh, joined us last week. Very successful episode we had. Um, so uh, thank you for all your comments. Thank you for your questions. Hopefully we've gotten back to all of you. If not, um, we will we will shortly. Uh, and again, if I can ask that you continue to share the stream, we'd really appreciate it. And um, any comments or any questions you may want to ask, please feel free to do so. Okay, so the only three ways to make money from property. Number one, capital appreciation, okay? By capital appreciation, we mean using a strategy where you buy property purely for capital growth, okay? And that's its sole purpose, okay? Now these are usually blue chip type of properties found in high value, high capital gain areas, and have a, a very low rental yield. So you're not buying them for strong rent, okay? So um, a lot of these properties here are actually negatively geared, right? So you've got a, a paper or a cash loss, okay? Which you can offset then against a preferably a high source of taxable income, okay, such as your work income. Um, so you make money from these properties based on their equity, so the growth um, over a long period of time. Um, don't purchase these properties and be disappointed by the rental returns you're getting on them, okay? Because they're usually found in, in high net worth areas, um, traditionally speaking, um, more established type of property, um, and, and the type of property that most people purchase, okay? So it's where, you know, most people make their money from property. You could, you could call it that, that uh, traditional buy and hold strategy, okay? When it comes to building wealth and taking care of your financial future later on in life, you wanna make sure you've got m enough of these because these are the ones that appreciate um, the fastest and they're gonna look after you in retirement, your family, and, 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 all, and all the things that you wanna have when you stop working, okay? So you definitely need a strategy around capital appreciation, and I'll cover off on the other two in a minute, but um, this is where the real wealth is built. So if you have a look at how most people uh, have made money from property, uh, traditionally speaking, this is the strategy they approach, the, the, the approach they actually use to uh, make money from property, okay? The second strategy is a positive cash flow property strategy, okay? Now, totally opposite to the previous one, okay? Um, this is where the rental income is more than all the cash expenses you incur um, added together, okay? You still get paper deductions, okay? So um, when, you, when you put your tax returns in. These properties are usually lower in value, lower quality properties, but high rental returns, okay? So your capital growth isn't a lot on these properties here, but you're not buying these properties for capital growth. It's purely cash flow, okay? You're, you're getting another income stream. You're buying another income stream, okay? Um, they're not positively geared. These properties actually produce a positive and taxable cash flow, okay? So there's a difference, okay? Um, they're mo mostly found in um, non-metro areas. If we talk about um, cities like Melbourne and Sydney, you're not gonna find these within a, um, God. The way we're going in Melbourne, you probably won't even find these within a, <laughs> a 50 kilometer radius of Melbourne, um, probably even 100 kilometer radius within Sydney. But um, these are more in rural areas, country areas, if you're from Melbourne, you know, in those Bendigo, Ballarat, even further out areas. They provide really good cash flow but don't expect to, uh, to to gain any equity out of these properties and be able to borrow against them because what there won't be a lot of growth okay and I'm going to talk to you guys how to tie all this or tie all this in together very soon the third strategy um, is more of an instant income strategy okay this is the one I actually started with when I, when I first got into property right um, so we're not really referring here to investment or investing we're, we're talking about trading stock okay so it's you you're getting into a strategy like this basically to turn over property so one of the most common ways that to do this is just buy renovate and sell 
okay? Um, you, you take the money that you make from the property and you do it all over again or invest that money into one of the other two strategies that we spoke about earlier on, okay? Um, the thing I love about this strategy here is that it usually replaces people's working income. Um, and done correctly, a lot of people use this strategy to fund their lifestyle, okay? So we're not really talking about investing here, it's you're buying, you're renovating, or you're doing a development, um, usually a smaller development, and you're selling. You're making the money, um, then you're using that money to either fund your lifestyle or park that money as a deposit into, say, a capital appreciation strategy or a positive cash flow strategy. Now, the great thing I like about these three strategies is that um, it's absolutely magic when you can when you can put all these strategies together, okay? We've done that for a lot of our clients. I've done that myself a long, long time ago. Um, you know, it's, um, it, it, you know, we, I get asked which strategy is actually best. You know, well, well, that really depends on your position, okay? So, if you love your job and you've got a really good working income, then you probably don't want to focus too much on a positive cash flow strategy, okay? Because, you know, you, you, you're earning good money, you're probably paying a lot of tax, and you can use that taxable income to offset some of the losses on the properties you purchase using a capital appreciation strategy, okay? So again, that's the traditional way that people buy properties um, in this country anyway, okay? Um, if you're looking for wealth building um, and purely wealth building, um, look at uh, capital appreciation. Because the properties that appreciate, the, the first strategy, eventually those properties do become cash flow positive. It just takes quite some time. So, and, in, and whilst you know, that, that's happening or during that time that it takes for that to happen, you need to make sure you can fund those properties. And the way you do that is usually from, you know, uh, hopefully, um, your, your tax deductions and your, and your rent, right, if structured correctly, if done correctly, or from a combination of instant income strategies or positive cash flow strategies, okay? I hope I'm not confusing you guys with regards to this, um, but I'm certainly happy to sit down and, and, and have a chat to you guys regarding this. Because if you can get this model in, in place, like, we have a number of clients whose property portfolio actually runs itself. So it doesn't require their working income or any contributions from their working income to fund their investment portfolio. So they've got their investment portfolio working on its own, right, where there's a combination of positive cash flow properties that offset the losses on the negatively geared or the capital appreciating properties. Um, and it's that beautiful balance of strong high capital growth and strong positive cash flow. So you're getting the appreciation and the cash flow at the same time. An amazing strategy, because really, it doesn't even require you to get involved. The portfolio runs itself, it grows, it provides you with cash flow, and if you add an instant income strategy on top of that, you know, I, I know plenty of people that have, that, have, that have done this through me, through us, um, themselves, and then quit their job and use an instant income strategy to just basically, basically fund their lifestyle so that you know they'll buy, renovate, or flip some properties, three or four properties a year, generate enough income to replace their working income, and then they're out of work. So that's where you start to get very, very close to that thing we all call freedom, okay? So you've got an investment portfolio on the side, working on its own without you, all right? Doesn't require any of your working income, right? Um, from trading time for money, right? and use an instant income strategy to buy, renovate property, um, and then park that money you know, into your bank account, fund your lifestyle, or continue to use that income to redo, do bigger bigger instant income projects, or more of them would be a better way. Um, not necessarily bigger, just more of them. Um, and, you know, and at that point in time, you probably don't wanna you know, be doing the nine to five thing. So, um, Really cool, if you can uh, come and have a chat to us about putting something like this together, because this is the ultimate wealth model, um, where uh, you know, you just, you, you've got the best of both worlds, right? You, you've got everything working for you. So, um, um, that's, that's, that's the ultimate strategy, okay? Where um, when I first started doing this, the, the first thing I did was I bought, renovated, and sold property. So for me at that point in time it was all about income, income, income and stacking cat, you know, heaps of money aside, uh, which then leveraged me into other types of investments. Okay. 
but it took me a while to work this one out. Um, and uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of planning. A strategy like this <laughs> does require a, quite a lot of planning, actually. Okay, because it does depend on your income. It does depend on where you are in life. It does depend on your exit strategy. Um, which one you do first depends on your situation. Okay, for me, when I first started, I was just I was looking for just income. I wasn't worried about buying property to hold on to, so it was buying, renovating, and selling. I wish I'd have held on to a lot of those properties, but we've all got that story. Um, so it was just buying, renovating, and selling, and, and getting stacks of income, um, and then using it for other strategies. So come in and have a chat to us. Um, any comments you've got, any questions you've got regarding this. Um, it, it's a very exciting, it, it's a very cool way to, to combine everything together. And, and like I said, get the best of both worlds where you're getting income coming in that doesn't require you to add it to uh, an investment portfolio, okay? So I used to call it fun money, you know, instant income strategy was my fun money because I had a property portfolio that would just run itself. Didn't require any, for me to do anything. I didn't have to contribute to it each month. Uh, I, ha I had a select amount of properties that were appreciating very, very well, and still continue to do so. Then I had other properties over there that you know weren't appreciating, but were giving me a cash flow to fund the ones that were negatively geared, so to speak, or making a loss at least on paper. Um, so it didn't require any of my working income to fund or contribute to those properties. So love to be able to sit down with you um, because you need a specific amount of each one of these properties to make this work properly. Uh, you, you need to understand, uh, like I said earlier on, your starting position, your exit strategy, what type of income you're on right now, the timeline you actually have that you wanna do this in, and then we can put all of this together for you. Um, and it's great, because it doesn't give you any attention on things like, oh, how am I gonna fund these properties? You know, it's really cool when you've got no Worry, you have no worries around income coming in, properties growing in value, you get that combination of both, it's really sexy. So um, any questions you guys have got regarding this approach or anything else regarding real estate, please feel free to send them through on Facebook. Um, we usually get back to you guys, we get back pretty quickly, Sheree, what, 24 hours, right? Yep. Um, some of us here like to sleep, so unfortunately we can't, you know, we can't get back to you all the time in, in, in a quick way. But um, send them through any comments you've got. Please uh, help us with um, with getting this message uh, out to the, to the people out there. So if you could share this, we'd really, really appreciate it. Um, and that's about it for this week. Um, next week, what do we got next week? Uh, episode number 14. Next week happens to be Tuesday, which is a big day here. In ah, Melbourne. yes, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Melbourne Cup. Melbourne huh? Cup. So for all of you people that, um, all of you people that actually aren't from Melbourne um, or from Australia, we have this horse racing event here once a year. It's usually the first Tuesday in November, right? What do they call it? The race that stops a nation, right? Where. Everybody gets a day off work, right, Sherry? Yes, we do. All right, I think my are you guys coming in? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Anybody coming in next Tuesday? <laughs> Unless we have to. We're married to our jobs. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, so we have a we have a race to stop the nation here. I think it's around three forty or something like that. Mm -hmm. PM. Pretty cool, you know. We all we all gather around for a barbecue, a drink or two, go place our bets, um, and uh, we call it the spring carnival season here in um, in Australia this time of year. But um, listen, we're still going to come at you next Tuesday, same time, same place. Um, I'm going to talk about um, how to pick a winner on the Melbourne Cup day and property investing, and how horse racing and property investing is actually very very similar. Okay and I'll share this with you, you need to take the same approach, okay, um, to both. So I'll share with you how those two actually work very, very well together next Tuesday. So until then, guys, um, thanks for joining us, thanks for tuning in, and um, again, ask any questions, please feel free to comment and share this stream, we'd really appreciate it. And don't forget our, um, our Christmas bonus that we've got. It's amazing, we, we're getting a lot of excitement with regards to this. A lot of people are, uh, are writing into us and, and texting us about our Christmas bonus um, uh, promotion here. If you guys can see that, yeah, get that nice and close. We were giving away 
a lot of uh, a lot of gadgets from our friends at Apple, iPods, iPads, Apple Watches, iPad Minis, HomePods. Wow, a lot of stuff. So call in and, and listen, you know that we're real with this stuff. I think we had a lady last week, Dessa, that came in and picked up an Apple Watch. Okay, and she's, uh, she's been very grateful and she was very grateful for that. So we are the real deal when it comes to giving this stuff away. Um, and then we've got our Maya gift card giveaway, right? Our referral program. This is really, really cool. Um, and again, we've already had a lot of, uh, a lot of clients that have, that have taken advantage of this and, and done very, very well. And I mean, guys, who doesn't need a little Maya card, right, just before Christmas to put some to use to put some of those uh, gifts under the tree? So come in and have a chat to us about that. I'd love to talk to you about the uh, the three strategies I mentioned today. Again, your capital appreciation property strategy, your positive cash flow strategy, and your instant income strategy. And when you can combine all three of these together, that's that's magic. That's freedom. All right. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We will see you next Tuesday. Happy Halloween.